Hello and welcome to another edition of Mailbag. What is Mailbag? Well, Mailbag is a feature of the channel where you guys leave lots of comments on the channel and I attempt to answer those comments or if I can't answer those comments, I throw it out to you guys who have more knowledge on some of this stuff than I do. So, let's get into the first Mailbag of this session. Remember, like, comment, subscribe to the channel. Go over to Instagram and follow me there. Go over to Facebook, follow me there. That's where the normal notices are. And consider becoming a Patreon. Next comment or question comes from Midi Mog. And this one's in response to the Boston Micro Rack Effects, a video I did in August 2023. These are the Micro Rack Effects that have been lent to me by uh, Mike Jones of Innovator. And um, Minimog writes, hi, thanks for the video. Really interesting topic. While I was already a Roland fan in 1985, I was not really attracted to the Micro Rack Effects series. I wonder why. But perhaps it's because effects like overdrive or compressor were seen as effects for guitar players. Um, and here's a line from the Boss webpage about the vocal effects. They're saying the Micro Wax series was popular amongst guitarists and was also used by vocalists. I can see, I mean, I know that a lot of vocalists did use the Micro Rack effects series. Um, in fact, you know, back in the day, you basically used what you could get hold of and made it work. Um, I can remember doing that with my my test cam four track. Um, you know, if you wanted an effect on something, well, you couldn't get it, so I popped around my mate who had a who was in a band, and I pinched his reverb pedal out of his little grey plastic carrier thingy for the day, and used that as reverb. That's what you did. You didn't have money. You made do. Um, I may do a lot. <laughs> um, in 1985, nine years after the launch of the first Boss pedal, the CE1 Chorus, Boss entered the pro audio market by releasing the series of half rack units that are now known as the Micro Series. The range consisted of 14 different units, including the power supply, and now, more than 30 years later, there is a significant interest in these units on the second hand marketplace. Yeah, I can see that. I've seen the prices. The Micro series was popular amongst guitarists at the time. However, three of them also found their ways into vocalists. The RC10 uh, compressor, the RRV10 digital reverb and the RDD10 digital lay. This didn't go unnoticed by Boss. You see, this is, this is the thing, looking back on this. If you were a keyboard player, and I think I said this in in a piece I did to camera about, I think it was this this particular piece, this video I did. The micro -ack stuff was expensive. Each unit was expensive. Now, if you were a guitarist and you went look out to buy a pedal, typically a Boss pedal back in that, that period of time would have cost you somewhere between 30 to 60 pounds UK. Because I can remember going with friends of mine, you know, on a Saturday afternoon, we'd trawl up to London, up to Denmark Street and in and out all the shops in, in and around Denmark Street to get the pedal. And I mean, there are, were other places that sold them, but if you wanted something, you could guarantee that one of those shops, Denmark Street, Charing Cross Road, you would get what you wanted. Macari's were Denmark Street, if I remember rightly. I think they might still be there, but there were another other, number of other shops down Charing Cross Road, and one of them would have the effect that you wanted. Um, so I can see I can see that, and I can see why some guitarists moved on to these micro rack. My problem with the micro rack, from a from a guitarist point of view, is you can't stamp on it in the same way that you could stamp on a pedal. You know, the pedal was one it was a unit. It was self. -com it was you know uh, probably wasn't about actually in terms of. Lengthwise, it wasn't dissimilar to the size of my phone, but it was about yay deep, and you know it had it had the the stamp pad on it. Um, 
and that worked really well for guitarists because they could they they boss used to sell the the six pedal uh plastic case for it all and basically what you did was you put your pedals in and you had you bought the little link cables that you know looped from one pedal to another pedal to another pedal and the pedals worked in passive mode so when they weren't engaged effectively the signal just went past straight through um, and when you did engage and then it post passed it through the the processing circuitry and then into this little box you could plug you plug the power distribution uh, or I think the box might come with a power distribution thing that allowed you to plug the the power the nine volt um, DC supply into each one of the pedals could have been AC I think it was DC um, and it, you know from a guitarist point of view you turned up you ran an extension lead to it you plugged your nine volt supply in guitar into one one side amplifier into the other side good to go fab um so uh yeah i, I really could see that so minimog thanks for the information um and you know as i said i read some somewhere and i'd seen um a video about the target audiences um and I didn't see many of these used in the studios that I frequented at the time. So the bands I was involved with, whether playing or whether you know I was involved with them for some reason or another, I was involved with quite a few bands back in the sort of 80s and 90s for one reason or another. Um, I kept away from the marketing and the booking side of it, but from a technical side, I was quite involved in quite a number of those because I used to help them fix stuff. Um, pretty much. So I used to get involved in in them and go to lots of gigs and spend my if I wasn't if I wasn't DJing at the time, spend my my Friday and Saturday nights in some salubrious dive in London normally. Um, so I can't, as I said, I can't see them being use, useful practical. I can see them being used in the studio. Um, I could see keyboard players using them, but as again, as, as I said in the original video. I think you know about this time the Alsis MIDI verb was coming on the scene, followed by the shortly after by the Quadra verb, and you got much more bang for your buck. You know, five hundred pounds for a Quadra verb, I think it was at the time, or a MIDI verb, a couple of hundred pounds for one of these. You got multiple effects on the on the on the Alsis product. You got one effect on the Boss product. Yeah, I know which way I would have gone, and in fact, I know which way I've got because I've got three Quadra verbs in my racks so that that kind of tells you where i went i've kind of gone for for a, a budget solution that meets that meets the requirements of what i need um so and that was kind of my conclusion at that point there were better solutions for a few hundred dollars more um midi mog right back wrote back and said i think the uh, case for the keyboard players multi effects uh, were hitting the market and worked better yes midi verb SP90 DP5 appeared in 1986, and that's coincidentally two years after the micro racks. Uh, we wanted digital reverb, digital chorus back then. In my case, I bought a DP3 for reverb and a second hand Rev5 for symphonic chorus. Um, Eddie, sorry, that was one year, not two years. My basic maths are dull. Um, <laughs> Basically, that week I had one of those one of those weeks where two plus two equals five for me, uh, and I said I my first effects unit was a second hand MIDI verb, uh, which I I think I acquired in 1991, if memory serves me, and my memory of that area is quite hazy sometimes. Um, the dimensions to the sound of this game was fantastic for the keyboard I was running at the time. That was my original DSR 2000, so. That was my first keyboard. I really have a soft spot for the Yamaha DSR 2000. I have to be honest, um, and a Yamaha FB01, which was my first effect, well, first kind of um, rack mount um, sound generation unit. Uh, and running the FB01 through uh, the MIDI verb added such a dimension to the sound. It really was fantastic. Um, which is the reason why I carried on using it and then and carried on. Um, the bottom line is, I didn't have sexy stuff back then. When I could afford it years later, I got more sexy stuff. I've, I've been on the lookout for a um, a DEP three for a while. I've seen a few come up, but they really have been hammered. And 
you know, when you get something, you know, if someone says, oh, it works perfectly, but the case is a bit battered, and you look at it, and it looks like the case has basically been run through a grinder, you know, that's probably not a great unit to, to buy. Um, it's probably been hammered, it's thrown, been thrown around, and these things were built to last, but, you know, there's too much restoration work to do on it sometimes.